Are you looking to expand your palate and dive into the world of bourbon? Well, make sure you keep an eye out for the ones that taste like rubber, watered-down wine, or even rotting peanuts. The following are the bourbons you'll definitely want to avoid. In 2012, Jefferson's Bourbon teamed up with Osearch, an internationally recognized nonprofit that tracks and studies keystone marine creatures, to test out a new bourbon-related theory. The idea was that the constant movement of bourbon sloshing around in wood barrels would in turn make the whiskey age faster. That's how Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea was born. The test barrels remained on O'Search's vessel for three years, and then when Jefferson's master blender tapped the casks, the sugars in the bourbon had caramelized and turned into a viscous black liquid, which is a good thing. But it's probably not worth paying over $90 for a bottle. The SLB Basement Bourbon Bar YouTube channel, for one, calls it a waste of money. The nose, palate, and finish are all horrible, thanks to the notes of leather and tobacco. It's also worth noting that Jefferson doesn't distill anything, as they instead receive bourbon from other sources and then label and sell it. Better toss this one overboard. Fan overboard! What? Stop the boat! Garrison Brothers is the first legal whiskey distillery outside of Kentucky. That means they've obtained the proper permits from the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission to lawfully produce and distribute spirits through different businesses, vendors, and retailers. But remember that old adage, first the worst, second the best? Bourbon fanatics on Reddit are especially harsh towards Garrison Brothers, as they declare that it's rather poor quality for the price you pay. But maybe consumers' expectations are simply too high? Either way, the whiskeys produced at this distillery tend to taste incredibly young, or as the Rock Gut Review channel on YouTube puts it, like, quote, chewing on a yew branch. A woody, funky taste seems to be a running flavor in this distillery's production line. Although, if the Reddit comment, quote, it tastes like rotting peanuts and cardboard doesn't make you hesitant, then by all means, go forth and experiment. Located in Louisville, Kentucky, Angel's Envy takes pride in creating small batch spirits that are finished in one of four different casks. Port, rum, sherry, and tawny. The company has been distilling for 200 years, so it's really established an impressive reputation, with its cast strength released in 2013 dubbed Best Spirit in the World. But not everything that Angel's Envy offers upholds that reputation. The consensus seems to be that their Kentucky Straight Bourbon is cloyingly sweet, since it's finished in port wine barrels. The distillery's website describes aromas of subtle vanilla, raisins, maple syrup, and toasted nuts, which basically sounds like granola, which probably isn't what you're looking for in a bourbon. And as one Redditor put it, it tastes like watered-down bourbon mixed with watered-down wine. So if you like port wine or granola and have $40 to spare, then perhaps this is your new nightcap. Otherwise, skip it. If someone described a bourbon to you as horrid brown water, would you want to try it? Hopefully not, though it's understandable if that would pique your curiosity. Like that Nathan For You episode with poo-flavored frozen yogurt. Because it's based on real poo. Never tried it. What if you were told that the inspiration for this bourbon is a famous racing horse? That at least explains the thoroughbred on the label. Produced by Western Spirits Beverage Company, a bottle of Lexington bourbon will run you around $42. It was rated 95 points in 2012 by the tasting panel and won a silver medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition in 2016. But just because something has won medals doesn't mean it's worth a spot on your whiskey cart. Reviews around the web call it too rough and not very enjoyable, as well as flat, thin, and weak. Customers have also vented their frustration about succumbing to shiny object syndrome, as the bottle looked cool. Simply put, at this price point, Lexington bourbon falls flat. Kentucky Gentleman is brought to you by the Sazerac Company, which is known for Fireball and Southern Comfort, to name a few. And it's distilled by the seventh largest distillery in the world, Barton's 1792 Distillery. But it also easily deserves a spot on the list of most regrettable bourbon purchases. Tasters on Distiller insist that this bourbon is flavorless, hard to get down, and incredibly bland and boring. They also say that it tastes rough and is cheap for a reason, as it goes for around $10 for a 750-milliliter bottle. The verdict is that if you do drink this spirit, you'll want to use it 
is a mixer. And you'll also need a nice, greasy meal the next morning to help with that hangover. One Reddit user sums it up nicely by stating simply, there's nothing gentlemanly about it. At least, the low price tag makes it a good gag gift. Blade and Bow's conception starts with the legendary Stitzel Weller Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky, whose claim to fame is that it was founded by the man behind Pappy Van Winkle. Alas, the distillery closed in 1992, though it was then resurrected in 2014 by Diageo, a company based out of London that specializes in a broad range of spirits. Blade & Bow is a 91-proof, $50 blended bourbon that has no age statement on the bottle. All that's known about this whiskey is that the liquid parties involved are aged for a minimum of four years, and that a proportion of the Stitzel Weller bourbon distilled prior to 1992 is also mixed in. Reviews around the web claim that this bourbon tastes cheap, that it burns going down, and that it's grainy, bitter, thin, and young. On each bottle of Blade & Bow is a collector's key, and if you collect all five, you'll become a member of the Executive Club. As a reward, your name is engraved on a golden mint julep cup stored at the distillery. Maybe that's a sign that this bourbon needs to be locked away. What comes in a really cool genie bottle but tastes like creamed corn blended with scorched plastic? It's none other than Willet Pot Still. The Willett family lineage and distilling experience extend back multiple centuries, but it was only in 1936 that the distillery was established on the family's property, three years after the end of Prohibition. Willett Pot Still is considered a Kentucky straight bourbon, meaning it's been aged a minimum of two years in brand new charred oak barrels. In total, this whiskey has been aged between 8 and 10 years and has actually won a double gold medal. But that was for the bottle design, which is supposed to resemble the historic pot still that the distillery used for generations. According to the distillery's tasting notes, this 94-proof bourbon smells of vanilla lemon cake and tastes like caramel, vanilla, citrus, and spices. However, taste is subjective and Reddit reviewers compare the flavor to bitter rubber, while one consumer on Distiller detected, hints of Redmond chew spit and unsweet tea fermented in a styrofoam cup in mid-July. If you're similarly disappointed, you can't make a wish and ask for your $50 back, as this bottle isn't an actual magic bottle. An ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. If flavorful, bold, and bright bourbon is your calling, then you'll probably want to steer clear of Basil Hayden's Kentucky Straight Bourbon. The bottle is spectacular, with an intricately etched label that complements the amber hue of the bourbon itself. But the spirit unfortunately doesn't live up to its trademark slogan of, you never forget your first sip of Basil Hayden. Or maybe it does, but just not in a good way. This 80-proof, light-bodied bourbon is produced by Beam Suntory, the daughter company of Jim Beam and Suntory Holdings. Bourbon reviewers across the web have left low marks, with one YouTube commenter declaring, it's like bourbon for people who don't like bourbon. Meanwhile, Reddit commenters have said that it's bland, tastes like flavored water, and simply isn't worth the price. That's enough to make you wonder if the judges who awarded this a silver medal at the 2020 International Spirits Challenge and a double gold at the 2020 San Francisco World Spirits Championships actually drink any of it. Koval Distillery doesn't believe in limiting itself to crafting just one single artisanal spirit, as evidenced by its varied selection of spirits, including bourbon, gin, and flavored liqueur. Every step is carefully monitored, from sourcing herbs, grains, and spices from vetted farmers, to using state-of-the-art technology to keep its products consistent. But that calculated and scientific vibe isn't for everyone. As one Redditor put it, Koval tastes like it was made in a lab by scientists that had never tasted whiskey themselves, and the flavor was described to them by a guy that loves terrible whiskey. So you should probably think twice before plunking down $50 for a bottle. Though Koval has received over 100 international awards, perhaps it should focus its energy on perfecting one spirit instead of tackling multiple products all at once. Produced and distilled at Beam Distillery, Old Crow Straight Bourbon Whiskey is one of the least expensive options on this list, available at around $20 for a 1.75-liter bottle, although more typically it goes for $22 to $25. This 80-proof has a nice golden color and a label that looks like an old vintage medicine bottle. That makes perfect sense as it's named after Dr. James Crow, a Scottish physician and chemist who invented the sour mash process. 
Reviews online have noted a sweet fruit nose, but also a stale, watered-down taste. Perhaps the quality has diminished over time, as Beam Distillery claims that this exact whiskey has graced the desks of American presidents, as well as acclaimed writers like Mark Twain. But we have to wonder, if these historical figures had more options available, would they have still picked Old Crow? Established in 1935, Heaven Hill Distillery is the creator of Larceny Barrel Proof Bourbon, a small batch weeded bourbon that comes out three times a year. With Larceny's slogan of so smooth it's criminal, you might unintentionally reach for your wallet just to make sure it's still there. This bourbon is aged six to eight years and has won multiple awards, including Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate in 2020. Per the distiller's tasting notes, Larceny has aromas of toasted bread, maple, and cinnamon, as well as tastes of molasses, fig, and hazelnut. But for some, it has an intense heat and too much cinnamon, and it's even been compared to lighter fluid. Ultimately, Larceny sounds like the exact right name for this bourbon, as some consumers fell hook, line, and sinker for a good story and mastermind publicity. I have called the police! This 92-proof straight bourbon whiskey hails from Tuttletown Spirits Distillery, located in a little town in New York's Hudson Valley. Bright Light's Big Bourbon is the second whiskey this distillery has ever produced, the first being Hudson Baby Bourbon, which has since been discontinued. But as noted by the manual, these two whiskeys are really one and the same. The first version was groundbreaking insofar as it was the first legal whiskey made in New York since Prohibition. Perhaps not being able to previously practice the fine art of distilling is what disappointed tasters are picking up on. That surely explains the Redditor who bemoaned. It's bad enough to make you want to curl up into the fetal position and sob like an infant. The distillery's website states that this bourbon smells of vanilla and oak, with a flavor of stone fruit, cornbread, caramel, and cashews that lingers long after your final sip. But reviews have noted an ethanol smell and a creamed corn taste. And some Reddit users have also taken aim at the sneaky marketing and a too high price tag of $50. That's too much, man! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite drinks are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.